Hello everyone, this is something a little bit different that I thought, why not, all the cool kids have been doing it because they're bored and they've been playing the same game for 8 years. I haven't been playing Overwatch for 8 years, but, you know, on and off. So I've decided to do a tier list of all the characters currently in up to Season 12, played the tail end of Season 11, currently playing Season 12, but haven't played since Season 3 of Overwatch 2. So the criteria I'm going to use specifically for this tier list, just as something for pure dumb fun, is just purely how fun I find the characters to play as. I'm not going to go into like what's hyper competitive because that really doesn't interest me at all, and nor would I know about what's the meta in competitive anyway. Uh, nor am I going to really go into, well, this character needs to go in F tier because, hey, they're they're super overpowered. I do have opinions about who should be nerfed and buffed, but that isn't relevant here. It is purely just how I enjoy playing the characters, and I do just flex Q when I play. I, I like to, like, have variety, so I've played as everybody at least a little bit, but there are still certainly characters I would rather play as in the tank, DPS, and support sections um, of the characters. So that's the criteria I'm going to use. And just as a, a pointless thing, I'm bored and I saw one of these and I thought, you know, there's a website that just does this for you. <laughs> like you just go in and type in Overwatch 2 and you just find this. And this is a very recent one up to season 12. So I thought, why not? And with that, the order presented is just the order it presented me with, by the way. So we're just going to go from, you know, top row, bottom row, etc. So here we go. And it has started us with D.Va over here. I've just realized you can't see my mouse, but hopefully when I move... Yes, okay, you can still see me there. Uh, I think D.Va is fine to play as, but definitely would not be one of my go-to tanks. She's very good. I, I believe she's good and competitive, but again, that doesn't really matter here. I don't particularly like her play style, which is just, you know, step in front of all the bullets, ideally eat them <laughs> with her defense matrix, eat an ult and it's fantastic, you've ruined somebody's day, and you get a second lease of life if your mech gets destroyed, and dropping a mech on people can be fun. I haven't played as her in season 11 or 12, but I did play as her in the first three seasons. Uh, she has changed a little bit since then, they've been nerfing her, buffing her, etc. So she plays a little bit differently now, like she's got 0.5 seconds off of that defense matrix. She's not really for me, but I would still pick her over certain other tanks. So we're going to put her, I'm going to class C as middle of the road for my personal preferences. And on that note, Winston, I haven't played as him in season 12 yet. I did play as him in season 11 and I played as him on and off uh, back in the first three seasons. He, I like his long range attack when they first added it. It was just so pitiful, but now it has kind of like a chain lightning effect. That's kind of neat. But it's also just fun to bounce around, put the shield down and tickle people to death with your, your pathetic weapon and then bat them around with your ult. I would just rather play as Winston over D.Va for sure. He still wouldn't be one of my first picks though, so I'm going to put him in B. Don't really have much else to say about him. I am working on a fantastic Winston impression though that you might hear in some videos. Next, it's all tanks first. Well, actually no, it's not all the tanks, but it's most of the tanks. Hammond slash Wrecking Ball. I keep forgetting that his name is actually Wrecking Ball in the game and not Hammond because that's the hamster. I don't know how to play as him. I've not played as him in the most recent seasons. I think I maybe played as him twice since Overwatch 2 launched and I don't get it. I don't get his playstyle and I don't really have any inclination to learn it. I like that he can spread out shields now. I think that was a good change. It still doesn't make me want to play as him though. For players who know the perfect lines to like grapple onto and swing into enemy teams, get in, get out, that's impressive. But it's not... Like if I'm going to do that with a tank, I'm going to do it with Doomfist. Because he's the one I put in time to learn. Hammond is funny. Some of his lines are great, but... And his weapons feel so... Like... Like you're shooting like foam at people. It's just... Nah. But do, would I rather play as him over D.Va? No. No. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. You go in tier D. Zarya I loved back in Overwatch 1. I think she was my second pick tank in Overwatch 1 with Reinhardt being first. Um, I don't really like her in Season 12 of Overwatch. And in Season 11, it felt she felt weak at full charge, but that might have just been me being rusty or not uh, you know, being used to how she plays now. She's a little worse, I think. But the whole shielding mechanic to go in, get charge, 
do damage when you have charge or protect teammates by giving them a shield. I like that playstyle, I still like it to this day. Out of all the tanks I've raided so far, I would definitely want to play as her over them, so I'm going to put her in B. And then we have to leave tanks for a little bit, and we go to Ash. I wish I was good with Ash. This is a weird one, because I actually really, I, I love her gun, and I love the, the coach shotgun as a kind of like an escape. I, I like the dyna dynamite mechanic, and I love Bob. I'm just rubbish with her gun. And it's, it's so weird. In general, I'm not great with hitscan characters, so that's going to be a running theme here. I wish I was better with her because I like her kit, and I like how she plays, I like her ult, and I try and play as her quite a bit. Well, a reasonable amount. I don't get DPS matches often when you flex Q, unfortunately. So I, w I would play as her more if I was better as her. I'm getting a little bit better with her because of time I've spent with a different character that we'll talk about later. But I would definitely pick her in the upper half of DPS I'd rather play as. So let's put her in B with the asterisk that I'm not good with her, but I wish I was. Next we have Bastion. Bastion, I like his rework. I hated him in Overwatch 1 and it, it became a, a meme of me. If I ever did anything good with Bastion, I would play up how much I hated that something good had happened. I like his kit in terms of being more balanced in Overwatch 2. I'm not really keen on his playstyle, it's just kill someone at range by spamming them down and if they reach you they'll probably kill you because you're just so such a large target. And he's got a stupid hat in Overwatch too. So I'm going to put him with the hamster, get on with each other's robots I guess, don't really like him. Cassidy is another hitscan character so in general I'm just bad with him. I'm so glad his lock on grenade that he had when Overwatch 2 launched is gone and it's just a hindering effect now and a flashbang. It's probably the best iteration of his grenade he's had. Um, I still don't particularly like him as a as a kit, as a DPS. He would be definitely low down in my picks, partially because I just do terrible with him. I also think his ult is very hard to get like good value out of without assistance of someone else like Lifeweaver bouncing you up or Symmetra teleporting you or you know, someone working with you to make it better, Anna or, or Baptiste. So you, you'd have to have a lot of coordination as well to make the most out of his ult. When you do, it's fantastic. It's like it could be game winning. But he's not for me. I would still put him above Bastion though, so I'm going to put him in C. Echo, I took a liking to when I first came back to Overwatch, which was when Overwatch 2 launched. I hadn't played her before that. I, I like her kit. I like that she has the interesting mechanic of the the death beam she does where it does more damage if the target is below half health so you kind of have to preempt it otherwise you're going to get gunned down before you gun them down. She's a little slow in the air especially compared to Farah, which I actually think is a fair balance for Echo that I wish Farah had. Uh, I like playing as her. I, I probably like playing as Ash more even though I would probably more consistently do better with Echo so I'm going to put her in C but She's good. I, I, I like her. I, I like her well enough. I'd have, like, if someone said you must play as Echo your next DPS match, I'd be fine with it, you know. Genji was my number one DPS character I played the most as in Overwatch 1. When Overwatch 2 launched, he felt basically the same. Then they brought in some nerfs around the time, it must have been Season 3 when I stopped playing again. Um, they lowered his average damage, they lowered how many shurikens he had, so you had to reload more often, and he just didn't feel great to play as, because yeah, Tracer has to reload like every two seconds, but it's really quick when she reloads. With Genji, it felt like a chore, and at the tail end of Season 11, I, I, I left Season 11 what little of it I played, of the opinion, I still like Genji as a playstyle, but he feels so ineffective, like I feel like if I was playing as Tracer, I'd be doing a lot better Whereas before, I'd rather have played as Genji over Tracer, even though I like them both. So I kind of hate what they've done with him. I'm guessing that's because of him just being too good in the upper echelons of competitive. But he feels weak to play with. His ult can absolutely still pop off. If you get the enemy team at the right moment when they're unawares, or you get help with Ana, you know, giving you her, her nano boost, that still pops off. You can still get kills, although a lot more characters can easily escape that now, or take up so much of your time like yeah you'll kill them but you won't get anyone else so I, I love playing as Genji I loved it since Overwatch launched I'll still pick him a lot but unfortunately with the way he currently is I just don't find it fun to play as him anymore 
and I know I would get more value if I was playing as different characters, so I've been playing as him less. So unfortunately, Overwatch 1, he'd have been up here. Easy, easy up here. With Overwatch 2 in general, he would have been here, probably. With Season 11 slash 12, it's difficult. I think I'd... Ooh, hmm, hmm, I'm, I'm gonna put him in B, but it's really, really close. Like, I'm just, I was thinking to myself there, I got offered the choice of playing as Ash or Genji for a round by someone in chat, say, they, like, they want to see me play as one of these two. Which one would I pick? Obviously, map and, you know, situation comes into play. But, yeah, I think B for now, I really hope they tweak him up a little bit. But, who knows, their, their decision-making regarding balancing of characters is just as bad as it's always been. Maybe even worse, actually. Hanzo is a character I hated in Overwatch 1, both playing as and playing against. In Overwatch 2, early Overwatch 2, didn't really care, didn't touch him at all. I've actually been playing as him a bit more often in Season 11 slash Season 12, and I'm finding it a bit more fun to just... Because I know whoever you're getting is getting annoyed because you're, you're just blind firing corners most of the time and if someone jumps you, you press your spams and then you just spam at them and hope that one of the arrows catches them before they get you. It's basically as simple as that. So I've been enjoying it a bit more just from a kind of taking it easy and just not taking it serious or as serious. So I've been playing as him more often and Overwatch 1, I would have had him down here. Not because he's a bad character, just I don't like him. <laughs> Overwatch 2 at launch, he'd probably still be down here. Just I wouldn't pick him. I'd, I'd pick almost anyone else. Almost, not exactly. Currently though, I'm kind of enjoying it. I, I regret missing his mythic skin. I didn't play during the season he had a mythic skin and it's pretty cool. I'm going to put him at a solid C. With potential to go higher. He might go higher. Junkrat, I think everybody enjoys playing as Junkrat every now and then because it's so absolutely brain dead. <laughs> Overwatch 1, Overwatch 2, current or at launch, it doesn't matter. Very little has changed about Junkrat. He's just a brain dead character. You can do some fancy stuff with him and I've seen, you know, people who only play Junkrat do some fantastic things. My personal preference is I like playing as him now and then when you just want a round where you can just, you know, use punt grenades at a corner or the cart. You might get kills. You'll probably miss his ult half the time because everybody knows to look for the tire and there's a billion ways to take the tire out. It doesn't matter. You'll still explode people. He is for if you want to just have a character you'll probably do fine with. And yeah, I play as him quite a lot still. I like him still. So he's going to be... Would I put him at A? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put him at A. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoy playing as Junkrat. And that's the main criteria. Now we have the complicated one, Doomfist. When Doomfist got added to Overwatch 1, he was a DPS. I tried him as a DPS, I did not understand him at all, and I did not care to learn him. Then I stopped playing Overwatch 1, came back at Overwatch 2. Oh, he's a tank now. That's weird, let me try him. Oh, he's absolutely garbage. Let me never play as him again. I don't quite remember what spurred me to start trying to learn how to play Doomfist, but I started watching pro players like, you know, the, the top players, Doomfist players and I was like oh you can actually do some really cool stuff with him if you put the time in and just from osmosis from watching the top players use him and then from practicing myself against hard bots and then just getting putting the reps in to try and learn the tech I was like oh there's actually a lot of nuance to this character he's still an absolutely terrible tank but if you play him as a, a slightly tankier DPS that's just harassing the enemy it can work and it does work and I find him fantastically fun. And I never thought I would put the time to learn him in to like a single character that I have put into learning Doomfist. In current Season 11, Season 12, he's probably the weakest tank now that they fixed Junker Queen. Before I absolutely would have put Junker Queen below him back in Season 3 when Overwatch 2's launch. But you can play a fantastic game as Doomfist and just still get absolutely stomped because because of the team composition, because of the enemy team composition. Uh, I feel like Junker Queen can kind of cope in those situations now. That said, I love playing as Doomfist. It's I, I like that people like watching Doomfist played better than, you know, just standing there with your block and then you die. So if it was Overwatch 1, I wouldn't have any idea what to do with him. Overwatch 2 at launch, would have no idea what to do with him. I'd just question why on earth did you make him a tank that can't tank? But towards the tail end of Season 2 and through Season 3, 
I learned how to play, play him as a tank. I've got plenty of highlight matches where I thoroughly whooped enemy teams. It, when when you kick off or, or you know just like really get into the flow state as Doomfist, it's incomparable to like kicking off as any other character. So he's an absolute S tier for me. I love playing as him. Um, definitely still have bad matches. He's still a terrible tank. Uh, and I do wish that his fist was still on a three second timer instead of four seconds. The switch to four seconds threw off my muscle memory. I'd spent so long learning so badly. And now just coming back, obviously I'm rusty because I haven't played since season three. So I'm relearning all the tech. I've got to learn how to use him on the new maps, but it's still fun. I still love playing as him. Satan, as we called her in Overwatch 1. I do not like Mei because I mostly played Genji in Overwatch 1 and back when she could freeze you, she was the hard counter. She, she just destroyed you and made you not enjoy the game. I've been having more fun with Mei in Overwatch 2 and I would absolutely put her in one of my main picks if I just want a character I know I'll do decently with. In fact, in returning to season 11 of Overwatch, I've actually got my highest kill count in a single match with me. Of course I did. Couldn't be one of the characters I like better as like a playstyle. I just, I absolutely popped off as me and got 55 eliminations with like three deaths. It was ridiculous. She is still Satan to me, despite her not being able to freeze anybody. Her kit is great. She does way too much damage with a right click, which is very easy to manipulate and pick off backliners. And um, yeah, she's just, she's very fun to kind of use her out to facilitate other people's as well. So I love playing as her. She's an easy pick. She's going A, even though she is sane and don't listen to her lies. Farah, I never liked playing as Farah in Overwatch 1 and I still don't like playing as her in Overwatch 2. I'm not convinced I have played as her in Overwatch 2, you know? I'm not sure if there's a way to check that. I don't like the way she plays. I actually think her manner of play is far too interruptive to the general flow of gameplay. This isn't the subject of this video, but I feel like Overwatch would be a better place without either her or Mercy. But if you took Mercy and not her, Mercy would just be collateral damage in that instance. Farah is the problem. Her playstyle is too disruptive to the flow. It forces people to change to counter her because if you don't, you lose. And I don't think that is conducive to everybody having an acceptable time. That's not what you'd hear from competitive play, of course. I doubt Farah even gets played in competitive much, but I would never play as her. She's an absolute F tier for me. I don't like the, her playstyle and I, I don't have any inclination. I would have to be forced to play as her, for sure. And I wouldn't do well with her, either. So, there's that. Reaper hasn't changed much. Apparently he is getting a rework, although I don't know if that's a meme or not. Chat keeps telling me he's getting a rework, but that might be along the same lines of Blizzard being like, yeah, there's a PvE mode coming, yeah, yeah. Just, just buy Overwatch 2, or rather download Overwatch 2. Sure it is. I'm trying to learn him currently, because I like his Mythic skin but I do find them very difficult to use with how immortal tanks who are, have both healers on them feel, unless it's Doomfist. So I, I am playing as him a bit more recently and I do, like his kit hasn't changed since launch really, like maybe times have changed, like the timers, recast times, etc. But his kit is exactly the same as it's always been. So he's fine. I'd probably put him, yeah, he's probably in the middle of the road. If I take out specifically trying to play as him more for the mythic skin, yeah, I'd put him at C. Not a high C though, definitely not a high C. Sojourn, they added her at Overwatch 2's launch when she was way too powerful in the hands of people who are way too accurate with hitscan weapons. I played as her now and then, I'm not good with hitscan weapons, well, you know, her railgun shot. I don't like the way she plays. Uh, I find her kit kind of boring. Uh, we're going to talk about that again in a second. So, Sojourn, I'm going to be real quick here. I don't think she's, I, like, I, I don't hate her, but... I'd, again, I'd have to kind of be forced to play as her, but I would put putting uh, I would put playing her rather over Farah for sure. Farah is de so far Farah is definitely like you'd have to pull teeth to make me play as Farah. On that note, Fallout seventy yeah, Fallout seventy six Soldier seventy six that's the one. Soldier seventy six is just COD, you know, it's just the the run and gun playstyle. It's like ugh, and he's got an easy alt to use. So yeah, sure, you can you can do that if you want. That's that's fine. I'm gonna put him. I don't. He's so bland. I don't have anything to say. I just he he is bland. I can't hate on how he plays, but I don't particularly like it either. So I think that's gonna go in D tier as well. They're 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 not for me. I I like I like high risk, high reward, or turn off brain get kills. That like those two extremes are where I live. 
not in the bland center. Speaking of which, Sombra, when they first added Sombra, I didn't like her back in Overwatch 1 days. I didn't like her at the start of Overwatch 2 either, because I felt like it was basically a wasted team space. I don't think she was any good at all, and I didn't like playing as her either. Since, I don't know which season they changed her kit, but since coming back from season 11 onwards, uh, I love her new kit. I, I think it makes her much more interesting to play and play against. I'm playing as her more willingly now. Not many times, to be fair, but I, I like how she plays. I like what they've done with her kit. So if they are changing Reaper's kit, I hope they give him the same love and care and attention that they've given her. Uh, her ult is still hard to get good value of that doesn't result in your immediate death. I will say that. But yeah, I like playing as her. I would definitely put playing as her above the DPS in D tier. In the C tier... Yeah, you know what? I think I would rather play as her over Casty Echo, Hansel Reaper. Yeah, I'm going to put her in a B tier, which I never thought I would do ever. Next up, Symmetra. Hmm. Symmetra's had her kit changed so many times I've lost track. But So let's just talk about how she currently is. I think she can facilitate super hyper aggressive teams easily. She can also play a pretty good defensive backline game. She's got diversity in that regard. Like if you need her to play the back because you've got a tracer harassing your healers or whatever, she can do that. If you want to facilitate your DPSs getting teleported in along with your tank to, to just wreck face, she can do that too. And she has her three turrets to defend her. I'm not very good at using her ult effectively, but I do still like playing as her, and I think she's a menace to society, much like Spider-Man. So I will put her... Ooh, it's either a high B or a low A. Let's go... Let's go low A. Yeah, another place I never thought I'd be, because I don't think I particularly cared for her back in the car wash days, because she also hard countered Genji. Torbjorn is another brain dead character. I feel like I, I, I quite like playing as him because he is in that brain dead category. I'll never forget the play of the game I got in Overwatch 1 where I was literally slept by Anna for the entirety of it. It's one of my, my fondest memories of playing as Torbjorn. Um, yeah, I like him. I, his, I, I like his new ult. It's, I think it's funny. Let's not focus on what he's spraying on his enemies. But yeah, I like playing as him. He is definitely an A. I, I would happily play as him as my DPS rounds. Speaking of happily playing as, I always played a, quite a lot of Tracer. Genji was always my number one back in Overwatch 1, but especially in Overwatch 2 and coming back via Season 11, Tracer was, well, she's actually, she must have been powerful because they nerfed her. So there was that period in Season, oh, was it Season 2 or Season 3? They either accidentally or stealthily uh, took away her fall off of damage so you didn't have to be near somebody to do maximum damage she was a menace that was fantastic fun well at least to play not play against but i always liked how tracer played i like the risk reward like uh, a stiff breeze will just insta kill you basically she has a bit more health now but there's still a bunch of stuff that insta kills her headshots from hands and widow still do i think and i'm sure there's other stuff like getting hooked by hog is still a guaranteed death so she's still that hyper like risk reward glass cannon you get in there you harass um you're probably going to miss all your ults because that's just the meme isn't it you try and stick someone and you just end up missing i love playing as tracer she's probably currently an s rank with doomfist i i wish genji was better than he feels to me and tracer just still feels great to use so she's s tier venture is new i, I started experimenting with her when i or they them when i returned to season 11 and I find their damage a little lacking, but the combos you can do, I'm starting to get the hang of it. They are a bit like Doomfist uh, in the manner in which you have to kind of combo your abilities. But at the same time, you've got to consider, do I save one of my abilities as a get out or is my team coming in so I can stay in or uh, like what's my health looking like? They even have the health like gaining on damage, which DPS Doomfist took advantage of as well. So... I like Venture, I've been playing as them a lot. In terms of how often I would pick them, I'm, I'm going to put them in, oh, it's, again, it's either a high B or a low A, I would say. I, I, I could see myself wanting to get a lot better with them just because they have that same kind of flow as Doomfist. It's like, get in, harass, get out alive. So it's, it's as close to old DPS Doomfist as you'd probably get currently, at, at time of speaking. I'm going to put her, them, they, an A. And that rhymed. Junker Queen kind of sucked. 
when Overwatch 2 launched, although I quite liked the aggressive style you had to have with her. Didn't quite flow with me as well as learning Doomfist. As it stands now, with the, the tweaks to her kit and the damage values and her healing, all that stuff, I quite like playing as her. The only reason I don't play as her more is because I want to get in rounds as Doomfist. So I, I, I would I would probably pick her over my other preferred tanks that we haven't gotten to yet. Based purely on I enjoy her kit more now and I didn't play enough of her when Overwatch 2 launched. So currently I would say, yeah, I, en I enjoy how she plays. Let's put her in a solid... Let's put her in a solid... B. Yeah, I, I, I like what they've done with Junker Queen. They've done a good job of, of finding a sweet spot for her. Just stop tweaking her now. She seems fine. <laughs> Widow is a character I barely ever play, and I think you would kind of have to force me to. It's I Playing as Widow would make me feel like I was just not there for my team. Maybe even literally, because you would never get on the point, really. But I just mean in terms of you've got to land those shots, and if you don't, you're just a detriment to, to your team. If you're getting harassed by someone as well, so you can't even find those shots to take. It's like, ugh, this is not a playstyle that I particularly like. I do usually like snipers as well, it's just it's in Overwatch, Overwatch 1, Overwatch 2, it doesn't matter. It's just not a, a playstyle I particularly enjoy. So Widow's definitely going to be down there for me, you would have to force me to play as her for sure, um, for those reasons I've listed. Um, if I had to play as a sniper I would play as Hanzo, so I think she's going in F tier. I just not for me, don't like her, don't like her kit. So, and I don't like that she can kill a lot of the characters I do like playing as in a single shot. Please stop doing that to me. Anna was my preferred healer in Overwatch 1. I'm still proud of getting a play of the game as her. And she basically hasn't changed. I think they've nerfed her timers a little bit, but that's about it. And I still love playing as her. The only reason I'm not playing as her as much currently is just because I'm putting in more reps as newer healers to try them out. So she would still absolutely be someone I would pick. She is definitely S tier for me. Like, she's such an easy pick to play as. I, I don't think she's played in competitive, but I love playing as her. I, I, I like Anna a lot. She's she's great. Baptiste. Uh, Baptiste, he does way too much damage for a healer, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I don't think I use him particularly well. I haven't put in the reps to learn how to use him well, and my inclination to do so isn't really there. I, if I had to put in more time to, to learn a, a healer, it's one we're going to talk about in a little bit. So my personal preference for Baptiste is lower than he is in like the competitive scene and, and general player base, I think. So he, he's not F. Like he, he is perfectly usable. I find his heal grenades lacking uh, and his damage for his left click too high. But yeah, that's a story for another day. I'm going to put him in D tier. Just again, purely based on just my personal preference, not my type of healer. Brigitte was another healer I did not understand. I was like, how on earth? She's only got three health packs and she does little heal farts. What am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to keep people alive with this? But the more I played as her, the more I kind of got what I was missing when people told me, no, she's actually okay. You just got to, you know, got to get in there and, and, and hit people so you do the heal farts and She's got a good ult, although it's changed recently, but she's okay, and I am playing as her a lot more now than certainly I was before, and I, she'd actually be in my upper selection of picks now. I would probably put her in... Ooh, well, let's see. I think she's going B. Yeah, she's going B. I, I'm, I actually surprise myself by how often I pick her as when I get... The thing is, if you do flex queue, especially if you're solo queuing, most of your rounds are going to be tank and healer. So my opinions on tanks and healers are the most well thought through and have had the most chance to develop compared to DPS in Overwatch 2 at least. Speaking of healers, Alari is a healer who has a hitscan attack and then um, that's it. And I didn't really like them at first because I didn't understand how they worked. Put in a bit of time with them and I'm actually really, really liking Alari and I've been playing as them a ton. I've had some fantastic synergistic uh, like play of the games <laughs> using her ult in combination with others. She probably does a bit too much as a, a healer, but I really like her. She is just really fun. She's probably my, my favorite of the characters they have added since I last played back in season three. Like since season three, they've added what, five characters now. She is absolutely my favorite of the bunch. So I'm gonna put her at S. Like 
Currently I'm just playing as her a ton and I'm going to continue. My Anna time is lower because Alari exists, so that's why she's up there. The newest character added, Juno, the lady from Mars. Um, I have I played as her a fair amount since the new season launched. Didn't play her on the PTR or anything like that. And I pick her mostly just because she's new. My own personal preference is I like that she can speed up your team. I like that she can zoom away with her escape, especially if you use the speed ring as well. She does a bit too much damage. I find her healing very lacking. I love her lock-on missiles. Locks onto enemies and allies and just fires at all of them. You can get cheeky kills like that, which always always feel very satisfying. But her general playstyle, I absolutely would not be picking her as much as I currently am if she was not new. So on that note, let's put her in... Let's put her in C. That's that's the biggest subject to change. She's brand new, so that that's subject to change in my general opinion of Juno. I could see it going lower rather than higher. Let's just put it that way. Kiriko. Uh, this is another character who I think does way too much damage, but when you take advantage of the way too much damage you do, it, it feels satisfying. I like her kit quite a bit, and she's quite satisfying to play as. Um... Because I'm playing so much Alari, my playtime as other healers has suffered, as I've been saying. So I feel like currently I'd still rather play as her over Juno if Juno weren't new. And compared to someone like... Still definitely below Anna and Alari for sure. She's probably a solid B. Like I, I do still like her kit, it's just there is a lot of competition in the healer range and because I'm flex queuing I'm mostly getting healers. So yeah, now I'll put her in B for now. Lifeweaver got added just after I stopped playing Overwatch 2 back in Season 3. I think he was the addition for Season 4. I vaguely remember that. I'm trying to get better with him, but I do not do well with him. So, I, I'm not any good with him. I have been picking him reasonably often, but I always feel that when I do, I'm letting the team down in terms of the healing. And I always decide to press E to try and save someone too late. Like, I'll do it, and then they're dead before the pull-in actually happens. So I'm not any good with them, and the inclination to get better with them is, is, is there a little bit, but there's other healers I'd rather pick. Like Alari, I would absolutely pick any day over a life weave around if I can help it. I would rather play as Kiriko over him as well. I'd say he's probably on par with where I've put Juno for now, so let's, let's just put him in C tier. Lucio is an interesting one because... I never play Lucio really, and I, there's this weird curse I have where if I do play as Lucio, I'll get a play of the game as him where I basically do nothing. So I, I don't quite know how to take that. <laughs> I, I quite like zooming around as him and, and bouncing around. I find his healing lacking, and you have to play hyper aggressive to do really well with him, is my understanding. And I, I have seen some clips of like hyper aggressive Lucios. Hyper aggressive Lucio is a perfect fit for Doomfist that will go in with him, I think. But if you don't go in with him, it's one of the worst picks for healer you could ever do. Um, in terms of how often I would pick him, I'm going to put him in C as well. It's, yeah, he, this is definitely kind of like, the, I, I said this was like the baseline of like, ah, okay, fine, I, I'll, I like them well enough, I'll play as them now and then, and then this is below the line, and then this is above the line, and then this is like maximum fantastic tier, my favourite characters. On that note, do not be mad at me, but I don't really have much to say about Mercy. I hate fighting her, and her playstyle of healer slash buffer is the most boring in the game. She is an easy F, F tier, I hate her, and I would never willingly play as her. Moga is the new tank, and he's interesting, he's, he, he's the most cartoon-like character they've added. He looks like he belongs in a Pixar movie, not just because he looks like Maui. So, I, I feel like if you have a gigantic minigun strapped to each hand and one of them sets people on fire and then inexplicably the other one does more damage to targets on fire, you should just be ripping people to shreds. But he's a tank, so he can. So it feels very underwhelming to use his kit. I don't really understand the benefits of using his ult. It feels like when you use it you're just guaranteeing that yeah, you'll, you'll probably get one other one on the enemy team. You'll die right after as well, most likely. I don't like his kit, I don't like his guns feeling so weak for how large and impressive they are. His stomp is pretty fun, I will say that, but and, and his just general personality kind of puts me off, I, I don't like him. So 
He's not F tier, but he's definitely D tier for me. I, I don't like him. Moira is my brain dead go to healer who I play as way too often because when you flex Q and you get forced to do your 17th support role in a role when you're trying to flex roll for tanks and DPS now and then, Moira is my go to where I'm just like brain off heal thing or sometimes get killed because she does way too much damage. So I like using Moira because she's so easy to use. Um, I, it's, she's a solid A. Uh, very, very close to an S. I actually quite like using her, but I don't think she's a good character. <laughs> it's a weird position. And Zenyatta, I... Zenyatta I don't like the healing of. His healing output is not good enough. He does way too much damage to Squishies for being a healer, and I don't get what they did to his kick. I don't, like, I don't understand the design decision. I don't like using him, he's too slow. His ult can be game changing, for sure, but personal preference, I do not like his playstyle at all. F tier. Just, I don't like him. Speaking of not liking, Orisa, her kit is too thorough at being good at a lot of things. That said, I'd, I, hmm, I wouldn't put her in F tier because playing as her actually feels kind of cool because you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm actually pretty tanky. Especially if, if you have both healers on you as Orisa, you're basically god. So it makes it very difficult to die. <laughs> She does reasonable damage. Her spear now does more damage. I cannot believe they actually gave her more damage. It's ridiculous. Her spear just plunges into the chest of her victims and just skewers them for 80 damage, I think it is now. 80 or 90. That said, I haven't played as her in Season 11 or 12. I played her as her a few times, Season 1 to 3. But where I'd given a choice, obviously, I would pick Doomfist. I'd pick Winston. I'd pick Junker Queen over her for sure. I'd... I'd there's a time and a place for an Orisa, and it's when you're having a bad day and you want other people to experience your pain. So I'm going to put her in D tier. Ramatra I think is in a bad place competitively, but I don't care about that. I like playing as Ramatra, I love his kit, and he's very, very fun to use. And I just, I love his voice actor as well, he does good work. And yeah, he's fun to play as, I really like him. Uh, do I like him enough to put him in S tier along with Doomfist though? Would he be alongside Doomfist? You know, if I was wanting to play as Doomfist and then I looked at my team comp and I was like, ugh, this isn't going to work, I would play as Ramatra instead. In fact, I'm thinking of an exact match where our first thing, couple of like fights with enemy team as me as Doomfist went poorly. For a split second, I considered changing character mid-match, which I never do in quick play. I almost just switched to Ramatra, so you know what? I've got to. Yeah, I, I like Ramatra. He he's a great character and fun to play as. Speaking of fun to play as, I played a ton of Reinhardt back in Overwatch 1, he was my most played tank and I still play as him now and again in Overwatch 2 and I still like him, he's super basic. <laughs> Hold up shield, let team do thing, smash into person, overextend, get killed, do again. Simple as that and he's got a fun ult, he's great, I love his voice actor, Darren DePaul is great, I love his voice lines, he's still just great fun. I would still probably put him below S tier. And this is, again, just in terms of my personal preference, not in terms of competitive nature. I know he's not considered great for competitive. But, yeah, I still love playing as Reinhardt. I don't play as him as much as I should, but have much time I have with him. I'd put him on par with Zarya. Him and Zarya were definitely my most played tanks in Overwatch 1. Still love their kits, and he's great. And we have two tanks left to end on. What a weird order they put these pictures in. How long have I been blathering for? Almost 40 minutes, minus some cuts, possibly, when I stopped to take a drink. Rotog, they've changed his kit a little bit, and I still don't like him. And it's still, I mean, it feels there's a certain level of satisfaction just getting that hook and boom dead. Especially now you throw down the mine, you turn people, like that's the new meta. You throw the mine down on a corner, you hook someone, but then you look down, look left or right, so you really discombobulate them. And I've had it done to me only once so far, I think, since returning in Season 11 through to 12. And it, it absolutely had the desired effect. I thought, okay, Rotog's going to pull me in. It's not going to kill me. But then I got discombobulated because he pulled me to the side. I was like, which way am I facing? Where am I? So I feel like in a way they've made his hook worse. I like that he's got a mine now because it kind of fits the theme with Junkrat. I still would not like playing as him really. He's a slab of meat with a one hit combo technically kind of that I don't think is fair, especially for a tank, especially when there's tanks who struggle to do damage, not Orisa. So, I don't particularly like Roadhog. You wouldn't have to, like, blackmail me to play as him or anything, though. So, I'm going to put him in D tier. Like, he, it's a, a low D, though, for sure. And then finally, Sigma. Sigma is a character I only started learning when I started playing Overwatch 2. And I ended up liking his kit quite a bit. 
I don't really have much to say about it. He's an interesting character as well, but I like the... Like, well, sniping people with rocks never gets old. But the having to place your shield and control where it is, like you can try and block your team with it to save them, block yourself, move it, etc. And that he can absorb bullets. And it's actually quite easy. Like, when you think of how hard it is to get people who know not to shoot a Doomfist when he's blocking to actually do that. Think of how easy it is by comparison to get people to shoot Sigma when he's holding his hand up absorbing bullets to give himself temp shield. Like, you'd think people would know not to do it, but <laughs> when you're playing as Sigma, they just do. It's so hard to make that happen as Doomfist unless you get a player who just does not know how Doomfist works as a tank to get that empowered fist. But yeah, when you play as Sigma, you can usually get at least a hundred health just by at least by someone shooting at you while you're absorbing bullets so yeah i like sigma's kit i would probably he, he's definitely wavering around this area definitely a high b or a low a i do like him i'm just trying to think would i rather play zarya reinhardt or sigma these days in terms of the a tier i wouldn't put him in s i would still definitely rather play as Ramatra or doomfist over him but i think i'd put him in in line with zarya and reinhardt yeah i think i would so that is it. All the characters currently added up to the start of Season 12 of Overwatch 2 in terms of just my personal taste about playing as them as a reminder. Again, not competitive, not who needs balancing, who needs nerfs, although I have obviously voiced some of my particular opinions regarding that. But in terms of you get me in a game and I'm flex queuing and I'm playing as tank, yeah, Doomfist or Ramatra for sure. DPS, Tracer, yep, or then we're going to have to dip down to the A tier. But Junkrat, me, Symmetra, Torbjorn for a super easy game or a character like Venture who I'm not playing as a ton right now but I might learn to love even more going forwards. And then support, absolutely. Alari a lot right now. Fall back on Anna just because of my experience playing as her. And then Moira is usually my go-to if I just want to turn my brain off and, and have a decent enough round as a healer. And then you drop down below that and you've got the lesser picks who are still fine. And then right at the bottom in the D and F tiers of the characters I just do not enjoy playing as at all and would not do well with either and would have to be forced to play as. So that is going to conclude a little tier list video. It's the first time I've done anything like this in however many years despite having 10,000 videos on YouTube so um, I, I just did it for fun <laughs> honestly. If you watched till the end thank you for doing so. Uh, let me know what you think of the characters in terms of your own personal preference as well if you want. I'm quite happy to see who your favourites are like who do you put in you don't need to list everyone. Like You could just tell me, actually, you know what? You could do S and F. Who would be in your S tier? Who would be in your F tier? Like, Give me the two extremes. As many or as few characters as you would put in just those two tiers. That'd be really interesting to see the, the two extremes from other people. And you can compare them to mine, obviously. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I don't know if they'll, I'll do more like this in the future. If you want to see more tier listy things now and then, I don't mind. I, I can blather about anything. <laughs> Let me know. Ta-ta for now.